the keyboard. Five, four, three, two, one. Ready, Ready or not, here, here we come. come. And where is he hiding this time? Tom Thomas! Yoo-hoo! Tom Thomas? You didn't forget about your grandma's birthday, did you? No! Oops, I did. We found you this time. Hey, that's not fair. It was my mom that found me, not you. Then go and hide again. Not now. I have to draw a birthday card for... Oh! My grandmother. So, we need one clean sheet of paper. When's your grandma's birthday? Tomorrow. But your card won't get there on time. Oh, then what can I do? Come on and use your noggin. Pick up the phone and give her a ring. Your grandmother will be really happy to hear your voice. No, we've got a tradition. We send each other birthday cards. And what's the internet for? Why don't you send off an electronic card to her? Simka, that's genius. Oh, this one's cool. Now go ahead and type your message. The letter D isn't working. How can I write Dear Grandma without D? Just let her be a plain old grandma without the dear. But the letter G isn't working either. It looks like we could use a pack -a mat here. A pack -a mat What for? To clean off the keyboard's contacts that got all dirty. What contacts? A key on a computer keyboard works pretty much the same way as a doorbell does. When we press on the button of a doorbell, the contacts inside touch, which lets the electricity flow that makes the bells ring. And when we press a letter on a computer keyboard, an electrical current runs from the keyboard to the computer, and that letter appears on the screen. But if there's dirt between the contacts that stops them from touching, then the current can't flow. Drinking. And so, you shared it with the keyboard? Here's the reason why it's not working. Where did so many crumbs come from? Uh, they fell off my sandwich. Down here. That must be the sauce for my mushroom pizza. Oh, no, Lick. Well, now it looks like we're going to be out picking mushrooms. The Fixies are always ready to help people out. But there are some people we really don't feel like helping. I remember when I was working as a Fixie back in one house. It was a disaster. One day, the owner spilled coffee on the remote for the TV. As I was running to clean the remote, he starts pounding the TV with his fist because the channels won't change. So now the TV is broken, too. Well, with no TV, he decides to listen to some music, and he carelessly pulls the music center onto the floor. So he tries to fix that himself and manages to break it for good. And then he sits down on top of his telephone and breaks that to bits. Meanwhile, I'm still busy trying to clean the coffee off of the remote. There wasn't a minute of rest with this guy around. In the end, I couldn't take it any longer. So I got out of there, and now I'm here, teaching kids. Tom Thomas, why are you eating food at your computer? Yeah, they don't feed you in the kitchen or something? <sighs> now I know it. It's not allowed. You said it. Now write your message. And write the address on there, too. Uh-huh. Mom, do you know what the email address for Grandma is? Grandma doesn't have an email address. So what? We went ahead and fixed that keyboard for nothing? I still need it. Am I Grandma? I'll give her a ring on the phone. You said you had a tradition of writing each other cards. And what? 
Grandma will be happy to hear my voice. That's some original idea, huh? <laughs> the flashlight. Where is that thing? Hi, Tom Thomas. What are you looking for? The flashlight. Ah, here it is. Why do you need it? Katya, I want to talk with her. Why not use the phone? This thing's a flashlight. It's not a telephone. No, you don't understand. Me and Katya came up with a secret code. If I flash just once, then it means, hello there. Oh, and Katya's also said hello there to you. And two flashes? What's that? Katya's asking if everything's all right. Now I'll tell her that everything's good. Oh, what's wrong with this? I think it's not working right. I see, Nolik. But what's wrong? Any flashlight is nothing more than a battery and a light bulb connected by some wires that are used to make a switch in between them. To turn on a flashlight, you flip on a switch. That lets the electricity flow through the wires from the battery to the bulb so it lights up. And if it won't light up, that means that the battery is dead, the light bulb is burned out, or the switch is broken. And now let's put all this theory into practice. I'm sorry, but I don't have time right now. Don't you get it? If I don't signal back, she'll think that I don't want to talk to her. And that would just be terrible. Just don't get all worked up. We'll help you. But first, we need to get the Mac up, uh, uh, um, the pack mat and come right back. See ya. Did you hear that? Masya, what a weird sound. Uh-huh. That's new. <laughs> now we know what the noise was. <sighs> Papus, can we use a pack a mat to fix a flashlight? Really, did you say a flashlight? <laughs> Do you know the story about when Granddad had to travel for miles on top of a dog? It's true! He was sent on a very important mission. A huge flashlight repair. What kind was it? A special kind called a lighthouse. <laughs> A lighthouse is a tall structure with a huge flashlight on top of it that is used to help ships and planes find their way. People have been using lighthouses since ancient times. The most famous of them all is the Lighthouse of Alexandria. It was built in Egypt more than 2,000 years ago, and it was more than 100 meters tall. The ancient Greeks considered this lighthouse one of the seven wonders of the world. In ancient times, people would burn big fires on top of lighthouses. Today, the light comes from powerful electric bulbs. Many of today's lighthouses not only give off light, but they send radio signals, too. Yes, thanks to lighthouses, ships and planes for miles around learn where they need to sail or where they've got to fly in order to stay safe. And thanks to that heroic deed of your grandfather, that big old lighthouse started working. Since then, not a single ship has ever gone astray. Simka, and what if we don't just fix the flashlight, but we do something heroic? Like Grandpus did. Uh-huh. All right, what do you say? Let's jump on the back of this dog and get moving. Stop ducking. Whoa. Grab hold of my hand. Uh-oh. Uh Chusaka, no! Get out right now! <sighs> Tanish! <laughs> that was really some heroic deed! Now it's time to go get that lighthouse fixed. Tom Thomas, hand the lighthouse over. What kind of lighthouse? The one that's your flashlight. Uh, I have no use for it. What do you mean? 
seen no use for it. But then how are you gonna tell Katya what she needs to know? I already told her. Watch this. No, that wasn't the deal. Yeah. You want to tell us our heroic deed was in vain? Well, if you need some heroic deed, then sure, fix it. Hooray! The pen. Not here either. Tom Thomas, are you looking for me? Huh. No, for a red pen. I need it right now. What do you need it for? Here, look what my teacher wrote in my assignment book. Bad behavior during the lesson, fidgeting, and talking. What are you gonna do with a red pen? Your teacher left something out? I thought maybe, you know, I could fix it a bit. I hope I find that pen. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh. oh, wow. Good catch. So, what do you want to fix on it? I'll just add a couple of no's, and then it will say that I had no bad behavior during the lesson, no fidgeting, and no talking. See, no problem. Cool. And then add this at the end. Tom Thomas is a perfect student. Nah, then they would guess I did it. What, is it clogged up? A little scribble will do it. That's not a pen. It's more like a pen knife. Oh, look, the ball's missing. What ball? It's a pen. It's a pen, but it's a ballpoint pen. <laughs> Old-fashioned pens work by dipping the pen into a jar of ink. But with a ballpoint pen, the ink is stored inside of a tube that has a metal tip on the end with a small steel ball. Well, small for humans, that is, but of course, for fixies, it's quite large. When you drag the pen across the paper, the ball spins around and gets ink on it from inside the tube. Then it turns over and the ink rolls out onto the paper. So without the ball, a ballpoint pen won't write at all. So what am I going to do? That's my only red pen. Hi, everybody. Why do you look so sad? Uh, we lost the ball from the tip of this pen. Where? It's here somewhere. Then you're in luck, boys. In the pack mat there's a metal detector. You can use it to find different kinds of metal objects. It. I can see that myself. It's not on the table, Nolik. Until not that long ago, humans used pens that had to be dipped over and over again into an inkwell. This was quite inconvenient. And so to make writing easier, the fountain pen was invented. A fountain pen could be filled up with ink, so it could write for a much longer time. But fountain pens would often leak, leaving blots of ink on the paper. This problem was solved with the invention of the ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are simple, handy, and reliable, except that you can't write with them on a wall or upside down for a long time. That's because the ball uses up the ink on it, and the ink can't flow up to the tip. But even this problem has been solved. There are now special ballpoint pens that can be used by astronauts floating in space. How awesome my metal detector is? Is that what you're calling me now? Yeah! Tom Thomas, help us! And now! Tidish! Cool! By the way, what do you need the red pen for? Well, Tom Thomas and I need to fix something in his assignment book. What? If I knew that, I wouldn't have helped you out. 
So no fidgeting and no talking. Hmm. And your teacher, she writes in your assignment book when you behave well? Uh-huh. Whenever we behave well, she writes a note in our books right away. Ah. Did you see, Simka, how Tom Thomas managed to outsmart everybody? Since I see nothing else here from your teacher, does that mean you behave badly the other days? Uh-huh. What? Well, uh... Did you see, Nolik, how Tom Thomas just managed to outsmart himself? The toothbrush. Once I finish you, my top secret growth potion, I will create my own giant canine crew! And then I'll rule the... Whoa! Wow, this is super! You're better than a TV show. Oh yeah, it's fun, but it's gonna end badly. <laughs> Tom Thomas, get ready for bed. I'm going, Dad. But first, my secret recipe. We start with a bit of carboniterous. And now a little bit of bread and butteress. And finally, beer the fumarissa. Chusaka. Don't be afraid. Drink, my baby. And you'll grow ten times your size. What? It doesn't taste good? Oh, right. I forgot it needed stirring. This hypersonic mixer will do the trick. Tom Thomas, you shouldn't use what doesn't belong to you. That's your father's toothbrush. Ah! Hey, cut it out! You're acting crazy! <laughs> are a big boy, but your brain is smaller than Nolik's. Why, thank you. Just go put the toothbrush back in its place. I'm like you never touched it. Nah, that's not right at all. Tom Thomas, what's up? I'm almost done, Dad. Simka, Nolik, please, I really need your help. No panicking. First, we need to understand what could have broken inside of there. An electric toothbrush is really simple, as long as you know these three parts the battery, the motor, and a very clever mechanism that connects the motor with the bristles. The whole secret to the toothbrush is right in there. That mechanism uses the spinning of the motor to make the bristles move very fast back and forth, from left to right, from right to left. And that's how it brushes your teeth. So what can we do about it? Here's what we do. First, we take out the motor, then we take the gears out, and then the mechanism. How much time do we need to do that? One or two hours. What? No! Just listen here, Tom Thomas. You need to open up the battery compartment. Wait for me right here. These are your teeth. Well, I mean, they're not your teeth, but you get what I'm saying. Nowadays, we use a toothbrush to clean our teeth, but it wasn't always that way. The ancient Egyptians used a chewed stick to scrape their teeth, while the ancient Greeks rubbed their teeth with a rag. And the Vikings, well, who knows what they used? And then, only 200 years ago, an Englishman named William Addis came up with something better. He drilled holes into a meat bone, inserted bunches of bristles into them, and there you go, the toothbrush. And here's what I need to tell you all as a fixie, that is, as a master repairman. You need to make sure to brush your teeth often, especially after eating, or you'll be getting them repaired often at the dentist. Well, is something wrong with the mechanism? No, it's fine. Is the motor burned out? No! Then what's wrong with it? You're not gonna believe it. But the battery died. That's all? I know what to do. I'll put in new ones. Shh! Your dad turned the toothbrush on. Looks like everything's fine. It's working. 
Ooh, way to go. Excellent. Your dad will never find out what kind of slop you mixed up with his brush. What slop? <laughs> How dare you, Nolik? How dare you refer to my mighty potion like this? Tom Thomas, somehow soap got all over my toothbrush. Can you explain that? Ay, ay, ay. Well, you got caught. What do you say now? <laughs> the spare part. Hey, what's going on? It was just working. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Simka Nolik. Look, I've got a Sorry, problem. Sorry, no time to play. We're busy. Busy? With what? We got put in charge here for the day. We even get to use one of the Pacamats. Papus and Masia went out to visit our fixie friends. Papus used to be with them at the Space Center years ago. Ever since he was a boy, Papus dreamed of going into space. Then why not? Fixies work on rockets, too. He even got a job at the Astronaut Training Center. He was put in charge of the centrifuge, and he made sure it worked perfectly. The centrifuge is a sort of very fast carousel for training astronauts. And Papus trained inside of it, too. Unfortunately, Papus never knew the rocket was scheduled to fly on his day off. And when he found out, it was too late, and the rocket blasted off without him. Since then, Papus hates his days off, but he still longs to fix something like that centrifuge. You know, something turning around like a washing machine. Too bad for Papus that the one in his house seems to keep working perfectly fine. So that means today you fix everything? Uh-huh. Well then, it's your lucky day, because my car just broke down. Hooray! We've got work to do. Nolik, let's go! Well, what broke down here? Wait a sec. Here, this part broke down. It's all covered in black. I wonder where we can get the same part, but a clean one. A clean one? Hmm. <gasps> Nolik! Genius! There's the same exact part inside the dishwasher. We can take it from there. Come on! Do you have any idea how all these parts are connected to one another? With this thing right under you. It's a special part called a circuit board. A circuit board's made like this. First, the board gets covered with a thin layer of metal. Then, paths are laid onto the board where the electricity is going to flow. After that, all of the extra metal is washed off of it with a special cleaning liquid, leaving the metal paths that were drawn on the board. These paths work just like wires to connect the parts on the board to each other. And then all that's left to do is attach those parts to their places on the paths. Pull it! Uh, uh, Tadish! Tom Thomas! Tadish! Hooray! It works again! Tom Thomas, I'm about to start the dishwasher. Are there any dirty dishes in your room? Nah. Slow down! Slow what down? Slow down your mom. We took the new part out of the dishwasher, see? Mom, wait, don't start it. You need to put, put, yeah, put in this one uh, dirty cup. No, look, follow me. Inside the TV's the same part. Now back to the dishwasher. <sighs> We barely made it. We grabbed the part from the TV in the living room. Not the TV. Uh, my mom's favorite program is about to start. <gasps> ah! <sighs> the television is working now. And where'd you get the part for it? From your dad's computer in his office. 
Hi, everybody. I'm home. Hi, Han. Are you ready for dinner? In a bit. I've got to finish a little work on the computer. Simka, hurry. Where else can we find that part? Stop. That's enough running. Here, take it back from the car. And then we put the part back into the computer and it started working again. Oh, that was really silly. Remember, you little experts, never repair any device at the cost of another one. I understand now. And I understand. If you were smart, you could have taken the part out of the old radio in the closet. Papus, but you know the radio wouldn't work then. That old thing hasn't been working for years. Masia and I have pulled out half of those parts already. The washing machine. Look at that, Simka. They're showing Titanic on the television. Hey, Nolik, that's not a television. That's a machine for washing laundry. No way. Yeah, it's just a plain old washing machine, Nola, don't you know? Uh-uh. Tell me about it. You're such a great explainer. Inside of a washing machine is a big drum. People put their dirty laundry in there and add a special kind of soap called detergent. When they turn the washing machine on, the drum fills with water, and then the motor starts to spin the drum. That makes the laundry rub together, forcing the soapy water in and the dirt out to make your clothes clean. After that, all that's left is to get out the water by spinning the drum really fast and sending the water down the drain. Oh, thanks a lot, Simka. I always wondered, why would you want to put laundry inside a television? Are you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a funny joke. Get over here. Shh, it's Tom Thomas's mother. She's got headphones on, we're safe. She doesn't hear anything except the music. Now she'll come back, add the soap, turn on her television, and watch the second part of the movie. Again with the jokes. This time I'm really gonna let you have it. Just do what I say. I came up with a plan. What's your plan? To run away! <laughs> Who's here? Hello? to keep in mind with a washing machine to use it right. For example, do you know what can happen if you wash red and white shirts together? Well, the white one might just turn pink. No, it's not because it's embarrassed, but because some of the color from the red shirt happened to get onto the white one. Another important thing to remember is to empty your pockets before you wash your clothes. Things like keys, nails, and chewing gum might not only ruin your clothes, but they can destroy the washer too. And this isn't only about little stuff. Big things like music players and mobile phones have managed to find their way into the washing machine. Oh, sure, these things look nice and clean after a good washing, but they certainly don't seem to want to work anymore. And never, ever put a pet inside of a washing machine. That's just no place for a living thing. You know what, Simka? I've never been laundered in my entire life. We better get out of here, Nolik, right now. And the faster, the better. <sighs> Come on, let's get going. And what about Chusaka? What about Chusaka? Let her get washed up a little in there. Maybe it'll make her nicer. But she could drown the poor thing. I don't think we can do this alone. We should get help from Tom Thomas's mother. 
One, two, stop! What? She moved out of the way. And three! What is that? <gasps> oh, my goodness! Oh, my sweet little baby! How did you get in there? You wait right here in the tub and I'll go get you a towel. So, you wild little beast. Looks like we saved your life. We're friends now? No, like, sure doesn't look like she wants to be our friend. So what do we do now? Same old plan! Run! The DVD. Chusaka, get away from here. So where did it go? Oh, here it is. Hey there, Tom Thomas. So what's on the disc? Hi there, Nolik. Hi there, Simka. It's a cartoon about Gulliver in the land of Lilypoo. My friend Jeannie let me borrow it. I have it till tomorrow. And what's the story about? Well, it's about this guy who gets shipwrecked where people are just so teeny, teeny, tiny. Fixies, you mean? No, not fixies. Lilliputians. Lilliputians? Uh-huh. Know what, Simka? I think that you fixies might have come from those Lilliputians. No way! Our grandpa told us a completely different story of the fixies. When something is very well made, then the saying goes that it was made with just a little bit of soul. In old times, craftsmen made things to last, and in each appliance they would leave just a little piece of their soul. Those little pieces of their soul would turn into tiny craftsmen called Fixies, who would then make the appliance their home and take care of it every day. And that's how the very first Fixies came about. But as the years have passed, fewer things are being made by hand, and more and more things are getting made by machines in factories. That means there are less and less new Fixies coming from human souls. Luckily, Fixies can fall in love with each other and have their own family, raising their children and teaching them well, so they'll grow up to become skillful and honest Master Fixie repairmen. So you're mistaken. We're not Lilliputians at all. We're Fixies. Yeah, Fixies. Listen, Tom Thomas, why don't you show us the movie? Yeah, yeah, I want to learn about Lilliputians, too. Really, I do. Sure, I'll show you. Oh, no. What's going on? I broke it. Uh, I can't give her back a disc that's messed up. Don't panic. We'll take a look at it. Come lay it down over here. Tom Thomas, why is this disc all covered in jelly? Because I was touching it with my fingers. I mean, uh, what else? It's obvious you don't know how a disc works at all. And you know how it works? Yeah, I know. Yeah? If we take a look at a digital disc through a powerful microscope, we can see rows of tiny valleys of different lengths. These valleys are actually a code for the cartoons, games, or music recorded onto the disc. Inside a disc player, a laser beam reads the code and helps turn it back into pictures and sounds. But if you scratch the disc or smudge the disc with dirty fingers, the laser can't read it and the disc won't play. That's why you need to keep discs clean and stored in cases. So that's why you should only hold discs along the edges. And when you're done watching them, you have to put them back inside their boxes. And what about this one? Do we have to get rid of it? Not so fast. Nolik, this calls for a major cleaning. Let's get the brooms. Oh, <laughs> 
Okay, Tom Thomas, check the disc. There you go. Now you're holding it right. Hooray! The disc works fine. Hooray! Now we can watch the movie about the Lilliputians. Hey, Gulliver, why are you sitting there? You've seen this movie already. I'm knowing what. What, what? Look at that pile of discs. Where do you need to put them? Huh. In their boxes. The electric kettle. That's four. <sighs> Come on, Tom Thomas, just one more. <sighs> Come on now, Tom Thomas. I know you can do it. <clears throat> Five. <sighs> that doesn't count. That doesn't count. No, your chin was below the bar. Ooh, that's all. I can't do anymore. You weakling. You're the weakling. I'm not. I just haven't eaten in a while, and that's why I lost my strength. You're a slave to food, Tom. And you see, that's the difference between us fixies and you humans. Many people wrongly assume that the only way fixies could live is by stealing food off of humans' tables. Or worse yet, by stealing it from their refrigerators. That's just a lie. It's not true at all. Fixies don't eat any kind of human food. So then where in the world do the fixies get their energy, you're wondering? It's very simple. A fixie's entire life is connected with devices. Fixies not only live inside of devices, but they take care of them and help them live longer. And in return for their help, these devices share part of their energy with the fixies. So there you go. The fixies help devices, and devices help the fixies. Yes, we fixies and machines have a symbiotic relationship. So we don't eat leftovers like cockroaches, because we're fixies. One, two, three, whoa! How's it possible that a big boy like you doesn't know how to make any food for himself? I'm able to cook, but I'm not allowed to turn on the stove. What can you make without it? Oh, yes. We have instant oatmeal. Look. Do you like oatmeal? You're joking. Only my folks say oats are healthy and make you stronger. Great. Well, then how do you cook it? It's not hard. All you got to do is add hot water, and I'm allowed to turn on the kettle. Stop and check if there's water in there. If there's none, you can burn out the kettle. It's got enough. Then you can turn it on. Hey, tell me, how does the kettle turn off? I mean, how does it know when the water's hot enough? Inside of an electric kettle, there's a heater hidden underneath its bottom. When you turn on the kettle, the heater warms up the water until it boils. And the boiling water gives off steam that heats up a special metal plate at the top of the kettle. The heat causes the metal plate to bend, and that turns off the switch. So you could say that an electric kettle feels when the water's boiling. Okay, now I understand. Hey, why do you need three bowls? You don't need to make any oatmeal for us. It's not for you guys. It's for my mom and dad. Start out here. No! Keep pouring into this one. And I say pour it here. And I say first you should pour it into mine. Oh, Nolik, where are you? I'll find him. Hang on, I'm going in. Ah, Simka! She was right over here. Ah. <sighs> Nolik! Over here. Simka! Here. Nolik! There. Where is your other boot? It got lost. Up there in the oatmeal. That must be your parents. Let's get out of here. Hey, and what about your shoe? Don't worry. I got another one. Hi, Tom Thomas. We're back. You must be hungry. We'll make you something to eat. But I already prepared us some food. And the water's already hot. Wash your hands. Tom Thomas, don't touch that kettle if it's hot. I don't want you to burn yourself. Yum, yum, yum. 
So today we're eating oatmeal for dinner. Delicious. Uh, maybe you have something else? Why something else? You're the ones that say that oatmeal's great for you and that it makes us stronger. Well, yeah, that's what we say. I'm glad that our son pays such careful attention. Mmm, <laughs> isn't it delicious? Really? Huh, what's that? Oh, look, you found the boot, Dad. What? <laughs> Uh, it's nothing. Just eat your food and don't get distracted. I'd like to see that oatmeal all gone, okay? And whoever doesn't finish won't get any candy. The remote. Hey, Simka, the button got stuck on the remote. How can we get it back out of there? Look and learn, Nolik. Please help. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. Should I let it go? No! Oops! <laughs> no, like, hide somewhere. She stole the remote. Nolik? Where are you hiding? Nolik? Hello there, Fixies. Hey, where are you? Hey, Tom Thomas, you got here just in time. Chusaka ran off with the TV remote. And so what? I can turn it on without it. And my favorite cartoon is just about to start. Forget about the cartoons, will ya? Nolik is missing! I'm afraid Nolik hid inside of the remote. And Chusaka took it. Oh, no, no, it's in big-time trouble. Tom Thomas, there must be something you can do! Chusaka, Chusaka, come here. Where is that dog hiding? I'm gonna go look in the other rooms. Simka, Tom Thomas, here I am. I'm over here. <sighs> For now, I'll wait here. Chusaka's not out there. Where are you? Hey, Simka. I ran to get a pack of mat What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna search for the infrared ray that comes out of the remote. That's so great. But what is it? I'll explain it to you. Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. If the rays are invisible, then how is it possible to see them? In the pack mat I've got these special goggles that can help me. And now what? Yell to Nolik. Get him to close the contact on any one of the buttons. Nolik! You gotta push one of the buttons down on the remote. A button? But how am I gonna do that? Wait, one second. Chusaka Chusaka with a brain full of rush. Nothing for you here. But here's something. There he is. He's over there. Chusaka, come here. Do you want a hot dog? So you want to play tough? All right, then. out for the remote's rays. It's just a shame it's impossible for me to see him. What are you saying? You can! If you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control 
and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. And then through the camera, you can see how the light emitting diode turns itself on. So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. By the way, if your toys weren't all stuffed under the bed, we would have found the remote without the goggles. Don't worry about it. When the cartoons are over, I'll put them away. So, you done watching? Time to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> The Combination Lock. Ah! He's home! No, Lick. Are you here? Stop your hiding. I'll still find you. No, Lick. Is that you? Hey, come on! That's not fair! You saw! Let me go again! I don't want to. You want me to play hide-and-seek when I got a brand new game to play with? Where is it? I don't see it anywhere in the room. I took it to school with me. For what reason? To show it off. Wow! Awesome game! Tom Thomas! Can I? I'm not done playing with it yet. Now just try asking me to do some favor for you. Hmm, wait, was it a three or a four? Hmm, it could have been five. I forgot. What about? I forgot the combination. And now I can't even do my homework. Everything I need to finish is inside of there. I'm not climbing in to find out your homework. Don't even ask me. Tom Thomas, why do you look so upset? The code for the lock. I don't remember it. Don't you worry. Ha! We'll open it. I know all about a code lock. A simple code lock is built with a few discs that have numbers on them. In the center of each disc is a hole with a notch. When all of the discs are turned so their notches line up in a straight row, the lock's pin can slide out freely. And to get the notches to line up, just turn the discs to the lock's code and the lock will open. It's that simple. It looks like we got to take a look inside the lock. Ah, I see. Nolik, where are you? There's work to do. I won't do it. I'm not going to help such a greedy boy. Nolik, won't you help me out here? And I won't be so greedy anymore. All right, you broke me down. Only as soon as we're done, you're gonna let me play with the game. Right. <laughs> There's no room in here. Hang in there, we'll start turning the discs one at a time and you yell stop when they're lined up. Stop, turn the next one now. Stop. Stop. Now try. Yes! Addy, you Tiddish! Hooray! And your code was really simple. Way too simple. The secret numbers and letters that you use to lock something up are called the code or the password. And to make sure your password's a really good one, here are some things you should know. Never choose a password that's really simple for someone else to guess. Like one with numbers or letters that are all the same, or are all in order. It's also a bad idea to make a password out of your birth date or name. It's better to think of a password that's a bit more complicated. And don't forget your password once you come up with it. Write down your password on a piece of paper and keep it in a safe place. But don't show it to anybody else. 
And then, if you happen to forget your code or password, you'll be able to remember it with the help of that piece of paper. And why did you ever put a lock on your backpack? I was hiding the game from the other kids. Then why did you take it to school today? I wanted to show it off to my class. And did you show it? No way. If they would have seen it, they'd be like, I want to use it. I want to play. And so you hid it and didn't show it to anybody? Not to anyone. Then why take it to school, silly? To show it off there. You're just some show off. You're just some greedy. Oops, sorry. Once greedy boy. Will you let us play now? <sighs> play away. you are we can you jump a little easier you're shaking the whole desk the music box and when the pied piper began to play his magical <laughs> Flute, the rats came out of their holes and followed him, and they never would be seen in Hamlin ever again. Whew! And then what? Huh? I can't read anymore. My legs got tired. Whew! Simka, Nolik, something's rustling in there. In where? In Dad's office, it's on his desk. It's inside the wooden container. Hmm, so maybe there's a mouse inside it. Tom Thomas, sit right here while Nolik and I go and check. And if there's a mouse in there for real, then how are we gonna get it out? Those rodents are really so big. And why was I reading that book to you, huh? Just grab a flute, give it a toot, and the mice will scoot. And where are the flutes gonna come from? We'll make them. Toot, 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 toot. You got it? <laughs> sure I did. Wait a second. Let's get a little closer. <laughs> See? It's just like I told you. No more mice in there. So let's toot a little more so they won't go back in. All right. So you're the ones messing around out here. Oh, Grandpus, it's you here. All day I can't work on what I need to do. Right from the start, someone's opening up the top, and then you two tooting out. It was Simka who came up with the tooting. Just because you're afraid of mice. Wow, what kind of machine is this? Well, what do you think? Mmm, a coffee grinder? Mm, no. A hole puncher? <laughs> A foot scratcher? What? what? Well, a machine for scratching your feet. <laughs> You're joking all the time, you. It's a music box, and it's just wonderful. Music boxes were invented more than 200 years ago. Inside, there is usually a cylinder with short pins sticking up from it. In front of the cylinder, there is a comb with metal teeth of different lengths. If you pluck one of the teeth, it will make a pleasant sound. A short tooth makes a higher sound, and a long one, lower. When the cylinder spins around, the pins pluck the different teeth, and music plays. Awesome! So what's broken in here? The spring slipped off. It has to be pushed back into the right place. Will you help? That's better. How come the music's not playing? First, you have to wind up the spring with the key. Tideesh! I know who can wind up the spring. Well, Tom Thomas, can you guess what kind of machine this is? A paper cutter. Uh-uh. 
How about a hole puncher? <laughs> You're such a joker. Now don't go and tell me it's a foot scratcher. Then I don't know. Then wind it up with the key and you'll find out. Do you want to know how the higher and lower sounds come out? Put a regular ruler over the edge of a table. Hold down one end of the ruler and pluck on the other. The shorter you make the end hanging off the table, the higher the sound will be. The teeth inside of a music box work the same way. And bells work the same way too. The smaller the bell, the higher it rings. The sound of a violin or a guitar depends on how thick the strings are. Fat strings make a lower sound, and thin strings, a higher one. How tight the string is also makes a difference. Take a piece of string or a rubber band, tie one end to a doorknob, and pull on the other end. With your free hand, pluck the string. The tighter the string gets stretched out, the higher the sound. If you want, you can even play a tune. I think I got it now. It's an old player for music. That's close, but not it. A music box is what they call it. I just said that. So what was it in there, hmm? Just a broken spring. It's not the thing I'm dying to know. Who was moving around there? All I'll say is we, Tom Thomas. Won't let that secret out. Shh. The magnet. Well, it looks like we need a pack on that. Hmm, where did this screw come from? Ouch! been five days. Don't worry about it. We're gonna find him for sure. Yeah, we'll find him for sure. Let's go take another look in the kitchen. But we already looked in there. We'll look better this time. Let's go take a look in there. We looked so many times already. Simka Nolik. What do you keep searching for in here? It's not a what, it's a who. Our papoose is missing. We've been looking for him everywhere. Oh, no. He's probably already turned into a screw. Because huh? he doesn't have enough energy. Maybe I could help. Surely. Let's start with you picking us up. We're just exhausted from running. In a dangerous situation, a fixie can choose to turn into a screw. But sometimes it happens all by itself. For example, when a fixie doesn't have enough energy. When this happens, the fixie grows weak, gets sluggish, and then goes into hibernation, turning into a screw. This bad luck happens when a fixie doesn't get charged up from being inside of a device. That's why fixies always work inside of machines, so they can stay charged up with energy. Sometimes a fixie that has grown weak and turned into a screw can get lucky. If a human happens to find him and screws him into an appliance, then the fixie will be able to get energized and come back to life. Then he'll unscrew himself and run away, leaving the human wondering, where did that screw go? I know I screwed it in. So, where should we look first? What are you looking for in here, Tom Thomas? Well, um... And what do you have there in your hand? Well, uh, just some screws of mine. Ah, I just found a screw not too long ago. Maybe it's one of yours. Probably. Where is it now? Here, take it, and don't leave them lying around. 
Should I turn myself around now so your papoose can turn back into himself? He's been lying in there for a week already. He doesn't have the energy to turn back into himself. Then what's next? We have to screw him into some device, you know, so he will get his energy back. Okay, but which one's Papus? All of these screws in here look like Papus. We'll use a magnet. How come? All the screws will just get lifted up together. First of all, not every... Not every kind of metal is attracted by a magnet. It's an easy thing to see for yourself. Just get a magnet. You probably have one in your house on the refrigerator. Try moving it close to different metal objects you have around the house like a spoon or nails or coins. You'll notice that some of the metal objects are pulled very strongly by the magnet, while some of the metals are pulled a bit less. And then there will be some metal things that aren't attracted to the magnet at all. Got it. And the second thing? Well, the second thing. We fixes aren't attracted to that magnet one bit when we turn into screws. Let's give it a try. Here, I found him. And now we'll screw him in. I wonder, are there any other fixies in here? We're not enough for you or something? Not at all, I just wonder. Nothing. Oh, and the screw went away. How about that? He already got charged up and unscrewed himself. Why don't you take a little rest? After such a big adventure. No thanks, I've had plenty of rest. Anyway, it's something I've wanted to do for a very long time already. The Stapler. Tom Thomas gets the ball. He makes an incredible move. He's wide open. Goalie sees him and he screams in horror. He shoots and scores! Tom Thomas, stop kicking that ball. Your school concert starts in 30 minutes, and I don't want to iron your pants again. All right, Mom. Just one more time, huh? No, I'm sorry. Mom said I have to quit kicking the ball. But Mom said nothing about dribbling the ball. Go, you can Tom, do it. Tom, you, you can, can do, do it. it. Yeah. Go. Ah. Whoa! <gasps> Tom Thomas, your pants. This can't be! These are my special concert pants! Ugh. Yeah, how will you go now? Well, your mom does have enough time to sew them. I'm scared to even tell her about it. She said that I had to stop playing. Hey, I've got it! Here! You think we should fix the rip in his pants with a stapler? Yeah, isn't it a good idea? Oh, I gotta try it out. You do. Like this? Stop! Why? What's wrong? Eh, my nose itches. That's all. Let's go. You're right, Nolik. It works. That is super. Yeah, the stapler's really great. Do you guys know how it works? Just keep stapling and I'll tell you. The staples for a stapler are lightly glued together. That way you can load many staples at once, instead of one at a time. And a spring pushes the staples to the front. When you push down on the arm, a metal tooth pushes the front staple down through a thin space. And the staple punches holes in the paper. Next, the pointy ends of the staple push down onto a plate. And that makes the staple bend behind the paper. And there you go! The papers are fastened. So you could say that we're sewing, but using a stapler instead of a needle. Yeah, and it works even faster. Huh? What's going on? Could it have run out of staples? There's still a lot more staples, but...
But one of them got jammed here in the slot. Ugh. Tom Thomas, we're leaving in five minutes. Okay, Mom. So, did you get it? No. <sighs> Why don't we get Papa's to help us? Because he's really strong and he's got a pack a mat. We can do this ourselves. Tom Thomas, find something we can use to push that staple out. The stapler is not a very new invention. It's been said that the French king, King Louis XV, had a stapler made out of gold and precious gems. Unfortunately, it could only hold one staple at a time. Modern staplers are much more convenient, and people have come up with so many kinds for paper, for plywood, and even for skin. Yes, surgeons often use them during operations. Then there's the staple gun that's used to upholster furniture. And its older brother, the nail gun, can even be used to hold together the walls of a building. And here's an invention almost as important as a stapler. It's the staple remover. With its help, it's possible to remove the staples put in by a stapler. How about the screwdriver? That'll work. Look, the screwdriver fits perfectly into the slot. Ah, that's great. Now push that staple through. Only keep your fingers out of the way, or you won't finish sewing. Tadish! It's still not Tadish. You haven't fixed your pants yet. That's it. They're done. Now we can say, Tadish! Tom Thomas, are you ready? Of course. My idea with the stapler was smart, wasn't it? And Tom Thomas's mother won't notice a thing. Will too. Just wait till she washes them. The fan. Pass him on the left. Step on it. Now pass him on the right. Look out for the wall. Hit the brakes. Why didn't you hit the brakes? He was just too scared. What do you mean, too scared? Something got into my eyes. Those were your hands. My turn. Let me show you how it's really done. Oh, what's wrong with the computer? Oh, it's been really acting up for a while. It turns off by itself. It's no big deal. I just turn it back on. I don't like this at all. Come on, Nola. Let's go inside and take a look. Just like people, machines can get sick, too. They can get a very high temperature and even start coughing and sneezing. And if a machine or an appliance gets seriously sick, sometimes it can be too late to fix them at all. So wouldn't it be better if we could keep them from getting sick in the first place? Everybody knows that people who look after their health get sick less often and live longer. And the same goes for machines. Machines break less often and live longer if they're properly taken care of. That's why machines need to be checked from time to time and cleaned and oiled. And that's what's called preventive maintenance. And preventive maintenance is something that always should be kept in mind by humans and by fixies. What? Can you hear that? What are all those sounds? It's probably just, mm, a fixie eater that woke up. What? What do you mean, fixie eater? Didn't you know that inside of some appliances there live horrible monsters? They love to attack fixies and eat them up. And the smaller the fixies are, the more the fixie eater likes to eat. Eat them. Ha ha! And how come you never told me anything about big eaters before? I didn't want you to get scared! <laughs> <laughs> All right, scaredy cat, let's keep going.
It needs our help. See how sick that fan is? Let's go and get it working right now. A computer can only run when all of its parts are working. And even though a fan looks like nothing more than a simple little engine with a propeller, the computer couldn't work without it. It has the very important job of keeping all of those other parts cool when they start heating up. It cools down the inside of a computer by blowing a stream of air. But if the fan gets dirty and starts working poorly, the computer might get overheated and turn off. Or it can simply break. You have to turn off your computer. How come? I'll tell you later. Part's done. Now we oil it. Let me try. All right. It's oiled up. <laughs> Just like your nose. Tom Thomas! Turn it on! Tideesh! And then suddenly, I hear this terrible roar of a fixator. But I wasn't scared one little bit. And I just ran right into the battle. And Simka? Oh, she was hiding somewhere. You know, she's a girl and they're all cowards. So I had to fight the monster all by myself. Ah! Oh, I guess that was an example of how girls hide like cowards when they're too scared. <laughs> well, um, yeah! SMS. Clear. Oh, take a look. A mobile phone. You think they bought Tom Thomas a new one? Oh, wow. Nolan, stop. Awesome. Uh, turn around. Oh. Tom Thomas, help us, please. We're trying to save your telephone. That's not mine. Oh. Katya left it behind. Katya! Katya! She's gone. It's too late. Oh, an SMS just came in. You won't read it, will you? Of course not. But what if it's something important? Tom Thomas, don't you even dare go and read her letters. Uh-huh, pretty interesting. Looky, there's just a ton of these messages. Now, Nolik. You go and distract him from the telephone. Uh-huh. Chisaka, hey! It's me, your buddy Nolik! Hey there! <laughs> <laughs> That's enough with the barking. Out of this room, right now. Done. Well, power's off now. Huh, what's up? It stopped working all of a sudden. Oh, it looks like you've broken it. What? No way. You did too. Well, Tom Thomas, now you have to give Katya your phone back like this. I just don't get it. It happened because you were reading someone else's mail. It was just an SMS. An SMS is no different from a letter. It's only shorter. People send SMSs through their mobile phones. And that's why looking inside someone else's phone and reading their SMSs is just as rude as reading someone else's mail. 
And that's why when we Fixies work inside of a phone, we always put our headphones on when a call comes in, so we won't overhear people's private conversations by accident. It's just the polite thing to do. I promise I won't read anyone else's messages. But that's not gonna make the mobile work again. Now what? Tell them the truth? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry, Tom Thomas, because we turned the phone off. And now we'll turn it back on. See that? The contact's barely attached. We just need to write a note to the Fixies who work over at Katya's. I'm sure they'll fix it. There are Fixies living in every home, and the work they have to do can seem endless. The TV starts acting up, then the doorbell breaks, the washing machine stops running, and then the phone won't ring. And besides all of that, there is cleaning and there's oiling. Like the appliances in the kitchen or kids' toys and all those other things. Modern houses are literally stuffed with all sorts of devices. And that is why the Fixies keep working day in and day out. Unfortunately, this can make Fixies get carried away by their jobs. And they can forget about their Fixie relatives and close friends that live in the neighboring houses and apartments. And that's not right. Just like humans, Fixies have to remember to go and visit each other more often and write each other letters, or at least send their regards. That's all. It's working again. You're the best. Now I can give a call to Katya and tell her she left her phone over here. Tom Thomas! Is that you calling? Yeah. And to who? Katya. And her phone is where? <laughs> <laughs> Like a fixie. The drain. Hey, Nolik, come help me. The fan in the computer needs dusting. Not right now. Me and Tom Thomas are painting a card for his parents' anniversary. Oh, look, who are you? You must be so tired. Hi, Simka. It's really great you're here. I have a question. Twelfth anniversary, is it spelled with an F or is it with a V? Uh, you know what? First put down the number 12, and then put a dash on there, and then a TH. Oh, right. But first I'll change the water. I'll be right back. Oh, Mama left her ring here. Whoa! Uh, no, uh, uh, no! Oh, no, what have I done? Uh, I spoiled my mom and dad's... Uh, special day. Where? In the bathroom? My mom's ring was lying there, and, and I dropped it into the sink, and now it's washed away. Uh, there goes the day. It didn't wash anywhere. Don't you know anything about how a drain trap works? About a what? A drain trap's a special curved pipe under the sink basin. <laughs> Water flows out of the faucet and flows down into the drain trap, and after that it goes down to the sewer. But when you turn off the water, not all of it washes away. Some of it stays down in the drain trap. It's made that way so the smell from the sewer won't get back into the house. A ring is much heavier than water, so if you happen to drop it down the drain, it won't wash away. It will stay at the bottom of the drain trap. Well, that means we still got a chance. Yeah, but how in the world can we get it out of that trap? Who knows? I don't know how to swim. Don't worry. It's all under control. Do you have any thread? Plenty of it. Go get it, and I'll be back in a flash. Hmm. I can't fix it like this. I need my welder. Papoose, I need to borrow your pack mat for a little while. Now that's a coincidence. I need to use it, too. Masya, then I need to use your pack a mat What? I'll bring it right back. Hey, where are you going? Just watch what you're doing, dear. Just like the name says, Fixies live to help machines and appliances. But machines are very big and Fixies are very small. 
so they can't get by without tools. Long ago, Fixies worked with just about anything they could find. Little feathers, threads, pins, but now they have backpacks called Hackamats. Inside of Hackamat are all sorts of tools. Just push the button and the Packamat spins around quickly shooting out a hook or a magnet or even a parachute. Every adult Fixie has their own Packamat. But before children can get them, they have to go to school and study hard and then pass an exam before they have the rights of a full-fledged Fixie. And it's only after all of that that young Fixies get their own Packamats. And what? You're going down there with just that on? Not just like this. Like that. Huh? She was just saying, when I tug on the thread, you need to pull me up. I got it. He just said, I got it. She said, she doesn't need me to repeat what you say. what fixies are for. Tom Thomas, who are you talking with in there? Oh, your mom came back. No one. Hey, can you turn back into fixies? I gotta ask you a question. I forgot, should I write 12th anniversary with an F or do I write with a V? Just, Just write, write the, the number. number. You're right. The lever. Strong. That's so light, I could lift it up with my finger. Oh my, but do you think you could lift up your nightstand? Don't know, never tried it. So then go on. Ha <laughs> 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 no way! And you are so much bigger than that nightstand. But watch, I can lift this big pencil. Just look how much smaller I am. So, who's stronger, you or me? Hmm, well, I guess it's not me. The Fixies may be very small, but they are actually much stronger than humans. Yes, it's true. <laughs> what, you don't believe me? Well, who's stronger, an elephant or an ant? You think it's the elephant. Well, of course, it's so much bigger. But did you know that one ant can lift up 50 ants its own size? And an elephant? It can't even hold up one. So it turns out that for its size, an ant is much stronger than an elephant. And the same goes for Fixies. Fixies are incredibly strong for their size. They can lift things that are 100 times heavier than they are. And Fixies can jump 50 times higher than their own height. If humans were as strong as Fixies are, they'd be able to lift an automobile all by themselves. Yeah, Tom Thomas, it's time you built up your strength. Well, how? Start lifting dumbbells. Or if you want to, you can use my barbell. <laughs> no thanks. I'll use the dumbbells my dad has. They're in his office, I think. Oh, there's one. And where's the other one? Aha, there you are. I'll get you out of there. Come on, come on. I'm helping you here. It's stuck. All right. Move aside. I'll get it right out. What is this glue 
to the floor or something? <laughs> hey, what's all the racket? Hi there, Simka. We can't get the dumbbell out from under there. Well, of course you can't. The sofa's pressing down on it. So that's what it is. And I was worried that I lost all my strength. Well, that means we have to lift up this sofa. We can't do that. It's too heavy for us. We can do it. Tom Thomas, get me your hockey stick from your room. Mm-hmm. We can't move a sofa with a hockey stick. Don't worry, you'll see. <sighs> Here, I brought it. What is it for? We're gonna use it as a lever. A lever? Well, yeah. A lever works the same way that a seesaw does, with a board resting on top of a piece called the fulcrum. But with a lever, one side is longer than the other. And that's the secret to its power. With a lever's help, it's possible to lift any weight. All you need to do is get the short arm of the lever under the load and push down on the long arm. And the longer the arm, the more weight you can lift. And that's how a lever makes people stronger. Well, can we find a fulcrum in here? Maybe the dumbbell. Can that be our fulcrum? Great idea. Now you're thinking the right way. You ready to go? Let's go. Lean on it, Tom Thomas. <laughs> I'm so strong, did you see? Now watch how I lift Dad's heavy weights for you. Look, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I told you. You'd be better off training with my weights. Didn't you just see me lift up the sofa? You didn't lift the sofa, the lever did. Did you ever hear the saying, knowledge is power? I've heard it. Although, some physical power won't hurt you either. So pick up your lever and go out and play some hockey. You know how built those hockey players are. The balloon. No way. You'll miss for sure. No problem. Huh. Anybody can do that. But I bet you can't do it if you tried bouncing the ball off the floor first. Just look. Oh, what are my parents going to do to me? Maybe we should call Simka. Simka! And what's Simka going to do to us when she sees this? So, got yourself in trouble, huh? You shouldn't be playing with a ball inside. And now we have your lamp to fix. But how? Only my dad can reach all the way up there. Why just your dad? You have a hot air balloon over there. That doesn't fly. It's just a toy, see? Well, it might be just a toy to you. But for us fixies, it's absolutely real. If an object is lighter than water, it floats up to the surface. And in the same way, if something is lighter than air, it floats upward. Did you know that hot air is lighter than cold air? Well, it is. And that means if you warm up the air in a balloon, it will float up. Hot air balloons use special gas burners to heat up the air inside of them so they will get lighter. And the bigger the balloon, the more people it can take up into the air. I know what you're saying, but where do we get a burner? You think fixies don't have their own burners? Huh. Sure we've got them. Bring it down here, and I'll go talk to our parents. No, no, and no. The human child must never see us. Listen now, Simka. We already don't approve of him seeing you and Nolik. He won't look. Papas, please. You're the one who told us how you dreamed of flying since you trained to go into space. Yeah. For two years I waited on standby, but I never went up. And you've never flown in a hot air balloon either, honey. So let's call it a deal. I talked them into it. There's just one condition. You can't watch. Okay. You can come in now. Now prepare the burner. Coming right up. Permission for takeoff? 
permission is granted. And off we go! Hooray! It's flying! Don't you peek! Turn around! Oh, it was an accident. I'm going to evaluate the damage. Maintaining proper altitude. So, they've reached the spot. Air balloons are really awesome. I wonder who figured out how to do that. It was the Montgolfiers. The hot air balloon was invented in the 18th century by the Montgolfier brothers from France. In those days, there were no gas burners, so they heated the air inside the balloon by burning straw. At first, there were no passengers on their balloon. Not counting the fixies, of course. I mean, how else could a balloon get up in the air without them? Unfortunately, the names of the first fixies who took that flight were not recorded in the annals of history. Following the fixie's flight, the next passengers were animals. A ram, a rooster, and a duck. And it was not until those three safely landed after flying a full four kilometers that humans dared to fly in hot air balloons themselves. Ever since their invention, hot air balloons have also gone by another name, Montgolfiers. Tidish! Tidish! All right. Simka, please let your parents know that I'm so very thankful. Okay. By the way, now you can turn around. You know, Simka, let's fly the balloon just like them. There's no way, Nolik, we would need to use the burner, and kids aren't allowed to play with fire. I'll give you a ride. Look, I still need to put it back up on the shelf, so climb in and let's do it. The screws. Hey, Tom Thomas, what you thinking about? Huh? For school, I have to write an essay. My very best friend. I don't know, who should I write about? What do you mean, who? Aren't I your closest friend? Of course. How could I forget to write about you? And you can keep forgetting. That's our secret, right? Don't you remember the promise you made when we met? Hmm. Sure, how could I forget? What's wrong with Chisaka today? Chisaka, why are these screws bothering you so badly? What's with you? Leave them alone already. Will you just calm down? You're gonna destroy my plane. Let's get out of here. Ow! What's going on? <gasps> What's going on? Hey, if you don't turn back again, I'm not letting you go. Oh, please, don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you, too. I'll just ask you one question and let you go. <sighs> Nolik, we can't. Don't worry about it. Quit your staring. Ask your question, boy. No way you can talk. Just, just, just tell me, who are you? Fixies! That's all. We answered. Now you let us out. Oh, wait, but what's it mean that you're fixies? That's already question number two. You promised to let us out, didn't you? I'm sorry. You can leave now. Simka, it's fine. I can see from his look that we can trust him. Uh, all right. We'll tell him. You gotta swear. 
that you don't tell anyone else. I swear it. Fixies. We're the little people that live inside of machines and appliances and take care of them. Fixing them, cleaning them, and oiling them. Humans never suspect us. They think that if something breaks and then suddenly starts working again, that it happened all by itself. Well, nothing happens by itself. It happens because we, the Fixies, are living inside. Yes, without the Fixies, humans would have so many more problems with their machines. That's awesome. And so what are your names? That's already question number three. You can call me Nolik, and her name is Simka. And my name's Tom Thomas. Will you come back over? Oh, well. Uh, I was this close to becoming the first kid in the whole world to make friends with the Fixies. I thought you guys would never come back over. And we didn't plan on coming back. But then we thought it'd be really great to be the only Fixies in the whole world who are friends with the only kid in the whole world who is friends with the Fixies. Ah! And who has told no one about us. The Fixies do everything they can do to hide from humans. They are afraid that if humans discovered Fixies, they would hunt them down and capture them and start keeping them in cages just like pets. And worse than that, they would take them into their laboratories and start examining them under microscopes, even conducting scientific experiments on them. Or suppose that humans thought we'd do all their work for them, and so they decided that they didn't have to take care of their appliances any longer. Well then, let me tell you this. If humans decided that they didn't have to clean or fix their own appliances, then not even the Fixies will be able to stop them from breaking no matter what they do. That's why the Fixies are very smart to hide from humans. Okay, then, I'll write about someone else. I have the very best friend ever. Period. When something's broken, he repairs it. He's the one and only No. The one and only Nolan. The microwave. <sighs> okay, children, for today's lesson, we're going to learn about the microwave oven. It's a very special appliance that people use to heat all sorts of different foods up. Oh, wow. Is there any chance that we could get heated up here? You'll find out about that, too, if you'll pay attention, of course. Whoa! Got it? Now listen carefully. I'm listening. I'm listening. Of course, young Fixies go to school just like human kids. But their parents teach them a lot of important lessons, too. Fixie parents take their kids on tours of all sorts of different devices and teach them what Fixies can do to keep them working properly. They like to show them how the computers or televisions or gaming systems work, or any one of the many appliances they take care of inside of the kitchen, like the stove. Every once in a while, a new device appears in the house, something that the Fixies have never dealt with before. To learn how this new thing works, the Fixies gather together and read the instructions that the humans keep printing up, but almost never seem to take the time to read for themselves. So now it's time to look at the magnetron. That's what emits the microwaves. Oh, and so the food absorbs the microwaves, and that's what heats it up. That's right. And now, look carefully to your left. Hooray! Freedom! Oh, Tom Thomas! What do you say? Wanna watch cartoons? I can't. I need to do my homework. Then just do it quickly. For some reason, whenever I start doing homework, I always get hungry for some food. Then just eat faster! No. The faster I eat, the sooner I'll have to start doing my homework. Mmm, you already got cold. 
I need to go warm it up. One minute should be enough. These aren't just ordinary wires. These are for... Oh! like it just broke. Who cares if it broke? What matters is that Simka and Masya aren't broken. Look, there's no one here. <laughs> of course not. We were <coughs> behind the wall. You wouldn't believe what happened in there. <sighs> oh, there you go. Tom Thomas, why did you put that fork into the microwave? Why not? You mean I'm not allowed? Remember, never put any metal objects into a microwave. If you put forks or spoons in a microwave, you can burn it out. And then not even a fixie will be able to fix it. Even a thin metal border on a plate can cause serious problems. Also, never warm up food in sealed packages or bottles inside a microwave. And one last thing, don't even think of cooking eggs in their shells in there. They'll just explode. Sorry, I didn't know any of that. No, like, and what were you thinking? Why didn't you warn Tom Thomas about this? Hmm? Oh, I, uh... Oh, today you skipped school. And now you don't know it either. No, like, where are you going? I'm talking to you. Oh, where else? I gotta go study all about microwaves. And I'll go do my homework now. But first you'll sit down and eat for a while, right? No, I'm not going to eat food. First, I'll go and play some games for an hour or so. The electric train. Woo -woo, woo -woo. Zoom! Zoom! And suddenly, the Earth was attacked by an alien spaceship. Pew, pew, pew! If help arrives here on time, we'll be saved. Move faster, faster. Come on, get off the train. Move it, move it. Tom Thomas, we came here to play. Oh, finally you're here. I need some aliens for this game. What kind of aliens are you talking about? Just plain old aliens. You know the ones. They come destroy the Earth and just about everything. We don't want to destroy anything at all. Why can't we be uh, the train engineers, huh? Train engineers? <laughs> you don't know anything about driving a train. Oh, we know plenty about trains. Humans invented the railroad long ago. But back then, the rails were made out of wood. People didn't start making metal rails until the end of the 18th century. But the first railroad cars had no engines to give them their power. Instead, they used horses to pull them along. Later, horses were replaced by the steam engine. Wood and coal would burn in their furnaces to boil the water in the boilers, making the steam that turned their wheels. And the fixies were there to help those trains go, making sure all of the parts could work together smoothly. But now steam engines have long gone away. The railroad uses electricity now for its power. These electric trains race along the railway at almost the speed of an airplane. So you might know trains, but you'll still be the aliens. This railroad is mine. So you're gonna play the way I want. The train is unloaded and leaving the station. 
You can play choo-choo by yourself. And I will. Why did you stop? This doesn't help either. It's not going at all. Simka! No lick. Where are you? Did I hurt your feelings or something? Mom, is Dad going to be home soon? No, is something the matter? We've been attacked by evil aliens. The train has to be fixed right away, or we'll never escape them. Uh, mm-hmm. You want some tea? Ah, I've got to think of something. Simka, Nolik, I know you're in there. Please forgive me if I hurt your feelings. I'm really sorry. There's nobody but you that can save the world from the evil aliens. All right, it talked us back into it. Well, let's go and check the rails. Nolik, follow me. I'm faster. Whoa! Well, so much for being faster. But it looks like I found the break. Tom Thomas, the rails are broken. I know, and so? You know, but that's why your train's not running. Just like a real train, model trains run on electricity. But there aren't any batteries inside the locomotive to pull the other cars. The engine gets its electricity from the rails. Each piece of the rail has a wire in it. If the rails come apart, the electricity can't flow through the track and get to the train. And without electricity, the train's engine just stops going. So reconnect the rails and your train will run again. Uh-huh. Put them together. Ah, yes. Hooray, the train's running. Way to go. So will you play with me now? And which way are we playing this time? Whatever you want, I'm with you. The train rushes down the track with Nola as its engineer, when suddenly from out of the sky comes an alien spaceship. Greetings to you, O oh people of planet Earth. I come from far away, from another galaxy. Have you come to destroy everything? No, I've come to fix it all. Oh! The aquarium. The coast is clear. The humans have left. Come on, let's go. Why are the fish looking so tired? Because they're not getting enough air in there. The water in the aquarium is dirty and it needs air, but the filter isn't working. The filter? Yes, that device over there. These fish need our help, and if we don't do something right now, they could die. Right. First, I'll fix that light while you and Masia go over there and see what is wrong with the filter. But I want to go and look at the filter, too. You're too small for this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're a giant. I mean, you're like six feet tall, huh? That's enough arguing. Nolik, let's go. Well, let's check it. Not working. Nolik, where are you? I'm up here. What are you doing up there? Nothing. Holding on. We don't have time for that. Get down. We have to get this switch working. Marcia, what's the matter with the filter? Well, probably something's caught inside and it's stopping the motor from turning. A filter is used to keep the aquarium water clean. A motor in a filter turns the paddles and pumps water through a fine net or a sponge. The dirt in the water gets trapped in there, and the cleaned water is put back into the aquarium. Many filters not only clean the water, but also add air to it, so there will be more oxygen in the water. You see, even though fish live their lives in water, they need oxygen just like all of us.
go there. There are lots of ways for people to breathe underwater. As an experiment, try putting an empty glass upside down in water, and you'll see that some of the air stays in there. That's the idea behind the ancient diving bell. An empty bell was lowered under the water, and some of the air remained in there for the diver to breathe. And about 200 years ago, the first diving suits were invented. The diver got air from a hose that started above the water. This let the diver spend a long time under the water, and even walk around on the bottom, but just not too far. Later on, people learned to squeeze a lot of air inside of metal tanks, and that's when scuba diving started. Scuba divers breathe the air stored in these tanks, so they can swim freely, and even dive deep down below the water. Our work is done. The light is on, and the filter is working. And the fish look so excited! As if they're not fish, but monsters. Thank goodness they're behind glass. <gasps> Papus! Just hang on! We'll be right there to save you! <sighs> but I don't even have my pack in that. Ooh, look how they're chopping their teeth. They must be so hungry. You're right, they're hungry. Nolik, come on! <laughs> Those fish, they're so ungrateful. We went ahead and fixed their filter, and all they wanted to do was gobble us up. And I'm the one who saved you from them. I was the one watching what was going on. Oh, <gasps> oh gee. Hold it. Do you think giving her some uh, food will help? As long as you're not thinking that food is me. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh! The alarm clock. Ha! It didn't ring again. Nolik, let's go fix the alarm clock. Simka, wake Tom Thomas up. Tom Thomas, get up! Tom Thomas! Hey, you'll be late for school. Tom Thomas, get up already! Ugh! Where's the battery in here? No, this is an old mechanical alarm clock. It doesn't work with a battery. It uses a spring. How's that work? People wind up the spring tightly. And then as it slowly unwinds, it turns the gears, which turn the hands of the clock. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, what? The alarm clock broke. Uh. Let's hurry and get you washed up. Tom Thomas, are you just getting up? Dad, the alarm clock didn't go off. It's broken. Here's the problem. It won't turn because the feather's stuck in the gears. Nolik, help me. Uh, uh. Papas, what's going on? It looks like it's an earthquake. Huh, it really is broken. Bad time to throw out this old piece of junk. Tom Thomas, I'm off to work. Don't be late for school. I won't. Where are we? In the trash can. And what's gonna happen to us? Well, you see, Nolik. People throw out broken things without a second thought. Even appliances that can still be fixed end up in the trash all the time. And the trash is taken to a horrible, deadly place called the dump. If a fixie happens to be inside a broken appliance, he will come face to face with great danger. 
Once, my uncle got thrown into the dump buried inside an old TV. He barely managed to jump out of the bulldozer's path, and it was a miracle he didn't end up in the incinerator. After that, he just roamed around the huge dump, trying to fix anything. He became totally crazed. Whew. Good thing the Fixie Rescue Squad managed to find him and bring him back home. I don't want to scare you, but we might be taken to the dump, my boy. Papa, I'm scared. Huh. Where is the alarm clock? Maybe my dad took it to get fixed. <gasps> but Nolik and Papus are in there. Now just a little bit further. I don't want to go to the dump. No tears. There's only one way out of here. We need to fix the clock and make it ring. But how? Inside the clock, there is the main spring, and there's also a second spring. The second spring is held still by a break, and so it waits. When the little hand reaches the time the alarm was set to go off, the spring jumps off the brake, and the gears are free to start turning. That makes a little hammer beat the cup of a bell very, very quickly. And that's how an alarm clock rings. So this feather is stopping the gears and not letting the hammer strike the bell. Exactly. I'll start rocking the gear back and forth and you tug it. And one. Ah! And two. And three. Tadish! Simka, I think I can hear my alarm ringing. Run to the sound, quickly! Uh-huh. Someone turned the alarm off. Whoa! And here comes that earthquake again! Nolik! Nolik! I'm here! Nolik! We fixed the alarm clock! So what was wrong with it? A feather got jammed in the gears. And how could a feather get in a clock? Oh, it's probably from when I put the alarm clock under my pillow, so it wouldn't wake me up. Huh, so you mean because somebody doesn't like to get up in the morning, we almost ended up at the dump? By the way, if that somebody doesn't hurry off to his school soon, he'll be late. Oh, you're right, huh? The refrigerator. Good job. My homework is all done. Just stay still. Oh, oh, you're really stuck. Simka, we're not going to leave me, right? We aren't. But I'm afraid, Nolik, you'll be stuck for a while. Tom Thomas, help me! What's going on? Look, this blob of white stuff grabbed onto Nolik, and it won't let go of him. Oh, it's a piece of gum. It's my bubble gum. Oh, thanks a lot, Tom Thomas. Now, what's the plan to get me unstuck from here? Here's what we do. It's got to be frozen. Once I sat on gum, too, and my mom put my pants in the freezer, the gum froze up and it came right off. I don't want to go into the freezer. Don't worry, Nolik. I'll stay right here with you. Just hold on. It won't take long at all. Huh. Why do I need to hold on? The gum's already holding on to me. Simka, do you know why it's so cold in the freezer when outside it's warm? I'll explain it to you. A refrigerator has a pump that pushes a special liquid through a long tube. Inside the refrigerator, the liquid in the tube wants to turn into a gas. To do that, it takes the heat from everything inside, and that makes the refrigerator cool. Then the pump sucks in the gas and pushes it out as a hot liquid into the tubes on the back of the refrigerator. 
That lets all of the heat collected from the inside escape into the air outside. Uh, I wish I was somewhere warm. Hold on. I'll go get us some warm clothes to wear. I don't want to hold on. I want to go with you. Just hang in there. I'm hanging. Tom Thomas, open up! <laughs> Marcia, do we have any warm clothing to wear? Why in the world do you need it? I just do. Well, I need to know what is happening. Uh... Hooray! Tom Thomas, Simka, open up the door! It looks like I'm gonna freeze up in here for good. A fixie is constantly surrounded by all sorts of danger. Inside a dark freezer, a Fixie can lose his way and freeze to death. If he's not paying attention, he can drown inside of a washing machine or inside of a dishwasher. And a careless Fixie is always at risk of getting an electric shock. Or suppose there's a short circuit inside of an appliance that starts a fire. If this happens, you need to run away if you want to survive. And what about humans? Well, they don't even believe that we Fixies exist at all, so they can accidentally drop something on top of a Fixie, or step on one, or kick us across the room. So if we don't get out of the way in time, ah! Oh! So what I'm saying, Fixies, you need to be careful out there and pay attention. So be smart and stay safe, fellow Fixies. I don't understand this at all. He was right here. Poor Nolik. I wonder where he went. Look at this! Footprints! Nolik! You're alive! You scared me half to death! How did you get out of there? Well, you told me about how a refrigerator works. And so I found that cold tube and started crawling on it until it got hot, and then I was here! Hey, there's smoke coming out of you. We need to cool you down right away. Huh? Where? <laughs> Look how it froze. I could break my teeth on it. You aren't gonna chew it anymore. I'd never do that, not after Nolik sat on it. Well, you didn't need to stick it where it doesn't belong. Hey, I apologize. I'll go and throw it away. Maybe you'll try the trash can? The thermometer. I can't believe the new thermometer isn't working. Tom Thomas, stay in bed. And I'll try and look for that old mercury thermometer. Did you get sick? That's one way of saying it. I don't know how I'm gonna pass that math test today. You're not ready, so you don't want to go to school. Well, yeah. So if you pull a sickie, then you can trick your mom. No, that's not true. I'm just pretending a little bit. You think so? Well, you won't trick the thermometer. Simka, what's a mercury thermometer? Mercury? is a type of liquid metal that's silver in color. There's no mercury inside of new thermometers. Now they're electronic. Old thermometers were made with a glass tube with markings and a bit of mercury inside them. When the end of the tube warms up, the mercury inside of it expands and creeps up the tube. And that's how those old thermometers measure temperature. The longer the column of mercury, the higher the person's temperature is. That means I need to warm up the end of the thermometer. Tom Thomas, you're a genius! But how will you warm it up? Finally, I found it. Well, let's see. Mom, can I eat something? <coughs> Hang in there, sweetie. I'll make you something. Ooh, that is hot. Now there's just no way it won't have a temperature. Hey, what are you doing in here? Well, how high did you get it? 108 is what it's showing. Oh, no. With a temperature that high, they'll send you straight to the hospital. And you don't need that. You'd better shake that thermometer. Yeah, that's what I'll do. 
That'll get the temperature down a little. Ah! Well, so much for that. Cheaters never prosper. Tom Thomas, did you see this? Nola, don't touch the mercury. It's poisonous. Stop it right now. And you, Tom Thomas, you don't touch that mercury either. It's dangerous. Then how can we throw it out? Call your mom and she can help you. I can't. How could I call her? Then she'd find out that I wanted to trick her. Maybe it's better to tell the truth. I can't. I can't do it. All right, then. It looks like there's no other choice. Nolik, call Papus and Masia. I'll get him. And you go back to your room and wait. Looks like this whole job is done. Not yet. We still need to neutralize this mercury. In everybody's home, there's all sorts of chemicals around. They are used for cleaning dishes, clothes, the bathroom, and dealing with pests. And all of these substances can be very harmful to human health. But some people don't seem to understand this. They might use a dangerous spray or a poisonous liquid and then forget to wash their hands afterward. And then they go and eat or rub their eyes with their hands. That can cause serious damage to their vision or stomachs. Ugh. And never put anything into your mouth that looks like medicine, unless your parents or a doctor gave it to you. And if you ever happen to find something on the ground that looks like a piece of candy, you must never put it in your mouth. You can get poisoned that way. Oh, humans. If they'd only remember this simple advice, they'd stay safer. And what do we do with the glass that's broken? That job's not for fixies. Hmm. Tom Thomas, we cleaned up all the mercury. And the glass, too? No, not the broken glass. But will you? Papu said that it's not our job. He told us you have to get your parents to come and help you. That part's your responsibility. Here's some food for you. What's the matter? Hmm? Mom, I... I broke the thermometer. Broke it? Did you cut yourself? No. The mercury, did you touch it? I didn't. Simka, you think you'll tell her the truth? And where did you break it? The bathroom. Why did you go in there? I wanted... I wanted to trick you. I have a test, and I didn't study for it. And now it's too late for school, hmm? 